Hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to talk a bit about 19 tone equal temperament. Here I have a guitar that I refretted to 19 tone. Hopefully you can see the frets. Uh, I did this with a pretty minimal amount of tools. I didn't have to use power tools at any point. I don't claim to be a luthier or a guitar tech of any sort. I've done the same to a bass guitar, and both these instruments turned out surprisingly well. So what exactly is 19 tone equal temperament? Well, it's a tuning system you get when you divide the octave into 19 equal steps, just like our familiar scale divides the octave into 12 equal steps. So why 19? Well, why 12, or anything else? It just happens that 19 is the next temperament up from 12 that can approximate triadic harmony well. Triadic being root, major or minor third, fifth type of chord structure. And that's not to say that other temperaments or any other tuning system isn't worth exploring. Um, but I think 19 tone equal temperament is a good springboard from 12 into alternative tuning systems. So I think it's important to note that 19 tone equal temperament really isn't anything new. Uh, the earliest known use of it was in 1558, and we know of keyboards from the Baroque period that had 19 keys per octave. Even if they weren't playing in strictly 19 tone equal temperament, they were playing in something pretty close. At the time, they were interested in it not to be microtonal necessarily, but to improve harmony. As it happens, 19 tone equal temperament has more pure major and minor thirds, and by extension sixth, than does 12 tone equal temperament. So our minor third is practically perfect. It has a 0.15 cent error from just intonation. And our major third is 7 cents flat from perfect, as opposed to the 14 cent sharp in 12 tone equal temperament. So you can basically take any existing piece of 12 tone music and adapt it for 19 tone, typically using a 12 note subset of the full scale. Although if you're doing complex modulations, you might need more notes. So some basic chords on guitar, um, sorry if the sound quality is bad, uh, my recording situation isn't ideal. So like I said, you can basically take anything in 12 and convert it to 19 without too much trouble. In fact, uh, you can adapt the existing staff notation we use for 19. To do that, uh, you need to differentiate between flats and sharps. So F sharp and G flat are now two different notes. So if you write F sharp on a page, it's just F sharp. It's unambiguous. So that brings us up to 17 notes. To get those last two, we add a note between E and F called E sharp, and a note between B and C called C flat. So that's um, kind of an outline of the basic 12 tone application of 19 tone equal temperament. But there's tons of new stuff in the scale to explore. Um, 
that doesn't follow the rules of conventional harmony. Whereas 12 tone equal temperament has two main tonalities, minor and major, 19 tone equal temperament has four. So, uh, like I showed before, you have your minor and your major, but you also have a sub minor and a super major. So, two versions of minor and two versions of major. The um, sub minor and super major have gone by different names in the past. I like the sub super system just because it makes the most sense to me. So anytime you modulate, um, you get to make all these extra choices. You know, if you modulate to a minor key, it's not just minor, it's what kind of minor do I want it to be specifically. And you can use this to really good effect to set mood. You know, if I want to write something really um, dark sounding, I'm going to choose the sub minor over the regular minor. And if I want to write something harsh, I'm going to choose the super major over the regular major. Another interesting thing about 19 tone is that if you repeat any interval in the scale, aside from the octave, it'll take you 19 times to get back to where you started. Uh, so like in 12 tone equal temperament, if you move by major thirds, you go C, E, G sharp, and back to C. But if we try the same thing in 19 tone, we get C, E, G sharp, and C flat. And we'd have to go around 15 more times to get back to where we started. So this may seem like more of a problem than anything, it makes things more complicated, but it's really not. Almost intuitively, you use those sub-minor and super-major intervals to kind of make up for that over or under shooting you do when you do complex modulations. Another aspect of this is you get to do what I call micromodulations. Um, that is, if we're playing a major seventh, we can move to a super major seventh on the same key. By keeping the root and fifth, but sliding up the third and seventh. But we also have the option of doing it the inverse way. We can keep the third and seventh and move the root and fifth. So basically there's, there's all these new ways um, that you can modulate even just with almost within the same chord. You don't even have to change keys. Um, there's also opportunities in 19 tone to play scales you wouldn't normally get to. For instance, uh, you can approximate the ancient Greek enharmonic. <laughs> you can think of. Okay, so I think that was as quick of a summary as I could manage. Um, if you have any specific questions or issues um, you want discussed, I might make another video. Uh, there's links for my music pages in the description. There isn't really much there right now. Hopefully there will be in the near future. And um, thanks for watching.